Chapter 12, page 184. For several days, Ranifer did not go near the little green room in the thicket. He dared not tell Hecate anything about the goblet. Hecate would become wildly excited. He would make elaborate spying plans. There was no telling what he would do. Whatever he did, Ranifer feared he might overdo it. Then the gods alone knew what trouble would descend upon them both. On the other hand, he did not see how he could sit and talk with Hecate and meet his eyes, unless he did tell him what had happened. I should trust him, Renifer argued with himself. I trusted him before about the wineskin, and think how he stood by me then. He knows how to keep his tongue from flapping. His father taught him, and he proved it was so. The argument had no effect. He could not tell anyone about that goblet. Not Hecate, not anyone. The only solution was to stay away from the thicket. It did not occur to him that Hecate might finally come and find him. However, that was precisely what Hecate did. He was standing outside the shop one evening as Ranifer emerged to start for home. Page 185. Asked. What are you doing here? Ranifer stammered. Waiting for you, of course. Hecate's subnose face had lighted with relief at sight of him. Now he stood gazing at him in such a puzzled, questioning way that Ranifer felt sweaty and hot with guilt. Where were you all these days? Hecate asked. I feared the Gebu of yours. I feared that Gebu of yours had done one of those awful things he's always threatening. The Ancient and I, we didn't know what had happened. Nothing has happened, Renifer mumbled, with a hasty glance over his shoulder. Gebu was only a few paces away, inside the shop. Come, let's get away from here. As they started in the direction of the thicket, he added, I have been very busy, that is all. Pi has kept me working until late, and and sometimes at midday, too, and he swallowed and gave up trying to find an explanation that would sound reasonable. However, Hecate quickly began to chatter about Setma and the conversation the ancient had overheard, and when that was exhausted, he launched into a story about the ancient's donkey, who had gone lame in one foot a few days before, and had required much rubbing with castor bean oil and daubing with cool mud. Listening, Ranifer cautiously began to relax, and once they had reached the little green room in the thicket, had greeted the ancient and examined Lotus's foot, which was well again now, and sat a while together in the old way, he decided that it was not, after all, impossible to be with Hecate, and still keep silence about the goblet. Hecate was as full of talk as ever, and either failed to notice that Ranifer said little, or tactfully ignored the fact. As for the ancient, though, his one bright eye rested, rested searchingly on Ranifer several times. He asked no questions. Only once did they approach the dangerous subject so suddenly that Ranifer had a very bad moment indeed before he realized he was safe. Without warning, Hecate said, Ranifer, I have had an idea about this tomb affair. Tomb aff aff affair? Ranifer stammered. The drawing, you remember, the little room you did not understand? Oh, relief washed over Ranifer like cold water. He did remember now about the scroll and Gebu's anger, though he had not thought of the incident since the day it occurred. The goblet had driven everything else from his mind. In my opinion, Hackett was saying in his craftiest manner, they are going to use that room themselves. Gebu and Wenemon use it themselves? Aye, for meeting in secret and for hiding the gold they steal. Now that Setma will not take it away for them. Now that Setma will not take it away for them. 
The ancient gave his high-pitched chortle of laughter. <laughs> Asked, young one, you should be a tail-spinner in the marketplace. You'd soon be rich, but the coppers folk would pay to hear such fine, unlikely stories. You think even thieves are going to share a departed one's dwelling with them? Of their own accord? But the tomb is not occupied yet, Hecate argued. It is not even finished. Is it, Renifer? They could make a separate entrance. The tomb is not even begun, Renifer said more abruptly than he intended. <laughs> oh, not even begun? Hecate sounded so disappointed that Renifer was ashamed of his curtness. Anxious though he was to leave the subject of tombs, he went on. They will not start work on it until flood time. After the High Nile Festival. That is three weeks away yet. Then it will be months in building, with workmen in and out every day. They would not dare hide anything there. Nay, they would not, Hackett said sadly. It was a fine idea anyway, the ancient chuckled. Fine if it had worked, as the fish said when it tried to take a walk. Hackett grinned. Never mind. I'll think of something else. Ranifer wanted to tell him not to try, not to think or speak of tombs again. Instead, he changed the subject hastily. Just think, three weeks, and it will be the festival. It was a good choice. All three began to talk of the greatest feast day of the year, when the waters of the great river would rise at last above their banks, and all the canals would be thrown open to receive the life-giving flood. There would be no work that day for anyone. All Egypt would make holiday in the streets, and the lowliest water carrier would fe feast at Pharaoh's expense and drink barley beer free. The prospect of honey cakes and dates and all the dried fish he could eat lifted even Ranifer's spirits. He agreed with enthusiasm to spend the feast day with his two friends from dawn to dark and thought no more of tombs or goblets until they parted on the thoroughfare. On the way home, though, his troubles came back like kefts overtaking him on silent wings. The tomb drawing, page 188. The tomb drawing clung in his mind, and so did Hecate's idea that there was some, was some thieves plan connected with that little room. Ranifer was sure it had nothing to do with a meeting place, or stealing gold from goldsmiths, or anything Hecate had imagined. But could it have something to do with robbing tombs? He did not see how. Not only was this tomb not finished, not even begun, but its owner, Pharaoh's master of storerooms, was still very much alive. There might be no burial, and thus no treasure in the tomb for years. There could be no connection between that drawing and the goblet. Gebu had simply been short-tempered that day because he knew the goblet was hidden in his room and his heavy on him. And now it was hidden in the scroll room, or it weighed upon Ranifer. Search as he might every time he had a chance, he had not found it yet. Gebu must have kefts in league with him, Ranifer thought in despair. No mortal could hide a thing so well. Perhaps he has taken it away again after all, some time, when I could not see, perhaps late at night. But I have not heard the hinges for a long time now. Nay, it is still there, it must be. Then why can't I find it? Day followed day. The river rose steadily toward its banks, growing broader, fuller, swifter. Ranifer's life remained a narrow routine of worry, occasional beatings, and work varied only by the hour at midday or evening with his friends in the marsh. He was glad he no longer felt it necessary to avoid them, but it was still necessary to avoid telling them what he knew, and he often wished powerfully that this were not so, because it became more and more obvious that their meetings were not quite as successful as before. The thing he could not speak of hung over the little green room like an invisible presence, ruining it. Ruining, it seemed to Ranifer, everything he did speak of. Once, when the ancient was not with them, Hecate brought the matter into the open. 
Ranifer, something troubles you. Something has happened. Why do you not tell me? Perhaps I could do something. Nay, there is nothing, Renifer said as casually as he could. You mean nothing I can do? I could do? I mean nothing has happened. Let us talk some more about the festival. We have talked about it only a few moments ago. Then I began telling you the new idea I had about that little room in the drawing, and you went back into your shell. And now, suddenly, you want to talk about the festival again. Aye, I do. It is more pleasant, is it not? Then tombs and rooms and... Renifer's voice trailed off into a sulky mutter. And the, he sat scowling at his toes and feeling miserable. After a long and comfortable silence, Hecate said wryly, Do I make myself unpleasant, as the viper said to the asp? Ranifer grinned in spite of himself, and in a moment they were laughing together, though still uncomfortably. I did not mean to be poisonous, Ranifer said, nor I. I am sorry. It is only that you seem so different. Different? Ranifer raised his eyes in alarm. Did the, secrets, did the secret show so plainly? Perhaps not different. Hecate studied him thoughtfully. You seem more as you were when I first knew... Page 190. When I first knew you at the Gold House. When questions angered you, and you wanted only to be left alone. I do not want to be left alone, Ranover said miserably. Or perhaps I do, just for a while. I cannot explain. No matter, Hecate said. After a moment he smiled. Perhaps we had better talk about the fact. Everyone talked about it these days, made plans about it, and thought of little else. Ranifer tried hard to do the same, but the goblet lurked always at the edge of his thoughts. More than ever, he hated Gebu and his heavy fist, and the evil thing he had done. He hated most the feeling that the evil had spread like a plague to himself. With every day that passed, the secret he knew weighed heavier and guiltier on his mind. A criminal walked free in the streets because Ranifer, the son of Thutra, was afraid to tell the crime. Still, in Ammon's name, what would it do to get himself murdered or imprisoned by babbling such a tale without proof? If I had taken the goblet when I had the chance, he thought, if I were sure it was in the school room now, I wish I knew what to do and how to do it. And suddenly, on the day before the festival, his wish came devastatingly true. At midday, he went to the thicket to make final plans with his friends for the holiday. Hecate arrived late, full of news and bursting to tell it. Sit down quickly, Renifer. Here, have this cheese. You'll never guess what, had, what has happened. What? Renifer asked warily. He had learned not to expect too much from Hecate's enthusiasm. Well, I have been spying again, only by chance this time. To be truthful, I was coming to meet you just now, just a few moments ago, and I saw Wenneman ahead of, ahead of me, so I thought I would follow him just for a while. He turned into the street of the Potters, you know, at that corner where Abba's shop stands. Well, there is a big shed next to it, only a roof, really, with poles to support it where Abba dries his pots and jars. I know, I know, go on. Something about this story was making Ranifer exceedingly uneasy. Surely Gebu would not hide treasure in pots and jars, but, well, Gebu was waiting there. He was pretending to look at the pots, strolling about idly, you know, but really he was waiting. Wenamon made as if he was, he would pass right by, then pretended to see Gebu, oh, quite by accident and stopped to greet him, anyone watching except me, of course. Hecate's eyes narrowed craftily. Would have thought they strolled into the shed merely to find shade while they exchanged a few civilities. Oh, it was cleverly done, but I was cleverer. What did they say? Could you hear them? Tell me quickly. Hecate would not be hurried. I'm coming to that. I slipped into the shed, too, and crept among the benches and tables where the pots are put to dry and found a place quite close to them where I could hide behind a stack of new-made water.